Literature gives us the opportunity to experience lives, perspectives, and worlds different from our own. Though remember, friend, a good story has many readings, and this is but one. Oh man, you hate your boss so much. He promoted some other dude, and there's rumors about him and your wife, but mainly, of course, for other reasons. So, you've decided to mess with him. But since you don't want everyone thinking you're some kind of, um, uh, jerk, that's it. You're going to have to be pretty sneaky about it. So you bide your time, nursing your hatred, just waiting for fate to drop an opportunity on your lap. And when Iago, the villain in the situation we just described from William Shakespeare's Othello, finally has an opportunity to ruin his boss's life, he rains down destruction on pretty much everyone around him, including himself. Seriously, it's one of the greatest villain roles of all time. So what do you think? Will you take the part? Ha <laughs> ha, there we go. Villain mode, activate. <laughs> Thanks so much to World Anvil for helping us discuss important worlds in literature. So you haven't read Othello by William Shakespeare. Oh, my friend, I am so excited to share this play with you, because it's truly one of Shakespeare's finest. A tightly plotted machine of tragedy that churns out one of the most devastating conclusions of all drama, and a look at how Elizabethan-era racism and misogyny mixed to destroy a whole community. When Shakespeare wrote Othello around 1604, to the best of our knowledge, there were no black actors on the main theater circuit in Elizabethan England. So the first performer to play the character of Othello, a black man, was white, and the second person to play him, and the third, and a hundred more and so on. In fact, the first black actor to play Othello that we know of was Idra Aldridge in 1825. But white actors like Laurence Olivier, Orson Welles, and Anthony Hopkins continued to play Othello, almost always in blackface, straight up through the 1980s. And of course, as we described in our episode on Taming of the Shrew, women also weren't allowed on stage in Elizabethan England. So just for context, when the play was first performed, it featured a white adult man as Othello and a white teenaged boy as Desdemona, aka from a contemporary standpoint, not the best look. Despite this, Shakespeare took pains to make Othello a well-rounded sympathetic character who rose from an enslaved child to a courageous, tactically brilliant general through working harder and being smarter than everyone around him. Actually, his ill-fated bride Desdemona falls in love with him because, unlike her contemporaries, she empathizes with some of his life experience and recognizes his true character, which of course makes the inevitable tragedy all the more painful. And you, my villainous friend, are going to be the one that brings that pain. You are Iago, ensign to Othello, a general in the Venetian army. Though not just any general, mind you, he is a Moor. And wow, you detest him. Maybe it's because he recently promoted another soldier, Cassio, instead of you. Or maybe it's because he was falsely rumored to have had an affair with your wife. Or really, let's just be honest about it. You don't like him because he's black. Also, Othello has recently, secretly, married Desdemona, daughter of a Venetian senator. Ooh, you know what? You could probably use that against him. You sneakily get the Venetian government all up in arms because a black man has kidnapped, hard air quotes there, Desdemona. So Othello is dragged before the Senate, where he very reasonably tells the story of how he and Desdemona genuinely fell in love, which she confirms, and the Senate uneasily agrees that this marriage was by mutual choice. Besides, you know, they really need Othello to lead Venice against a war with the Turks, because he's like the only one that can win this war. So now, Othello's crew, including you and your wife, are headed to Cyprus to go to battle. <sighs> well, looks like your scheme's been foiled, huh? But then, you have a stroke of good luck. See, Desdemona accidentally drops a special handkerchief that Othello had given her as a token of his love. Your wife, Amelia, innocently brings it to you. But ho ho! She doesn't know that you formulated a wicked handkerchief-themed scheme. Using your misbegotten spoils, you launch into a plot aimed at making Othello murderously jealous. You start by planting the handkerchief on your rival Cassio, and then tricking Cassio into getting so drunk that he starts a riot, ruining his relationship with Othello. Next, you give Cassio advice that he should get Desdemona on his side so that she'll help him get back in her husband's good graces. Yeah, I think I can see where this is going. And lastly, you start pouring poisonous words into Othello's ear. A hint about Cassio and Desdemona here, an accusation there. Oh, and would you look at that? Cassio seems to have that special handkerchief. I mean, Desdemona must have given it to him, right Othello? Soon, the general is absolutely convinced that his faithful wife is having an affair with his good friend. He then vows to murder them both, and you, full of fake empathy, reluctantly, in quotes, offer to help him. 
Now, you and your henchmen fail in your attempt to murder Cassio, though Cassio does manage to mortally wound your minion, so at least that guy won't snitch, huh? Meanwhile, Othello goes to Desdemona's room, turns out the light, and tells her he's going to kill her for being unfaithful. She's stunned that he would think that about her. But because of your poisonous words, he no longer believes anything she says, and he smothers her to death with a pillow in her bed. And then, the Venetian authorities arrive to discover you, Amelia, and Othello, all by Desdemona's corpse. Othello starts to recount his justification for murdering Desdemona, and as you get to the detail of the handkerchief, Amelia suddenly realizes that you're behind all of this. She accuses you and relates all of the facts she knows which paints you as the mastermind of this plot, so you, in turn, murder her in front of everyone. Realizing now that he's been tricked, Othello wounds you in an attempt to take your life. And as authorities prepare to take you and Othello away, he manages to produce another knife and kills himself. So just taking a moment to look at the scoreboard here, Desdemona and your own wife Amelia are now dead, Cassio is now going to be promoted to general, and of course the war is still going on. But you got your revenge on Othello. <laughs> you know, revenge for him being a black man in a position of power over you. Cool, 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 cool. Part of the horror of this play is that Shakespeare has written Iago to be the audience's surrogate in the story. He charms us like he charms the people that he manipulates in this world. And what's worse, he's completely honest with us about his evil intent. He acknowledges that the people he's hurting are pretty blameless and kind of revels in their misery. And while he's the instigator of all of this sorrow, he's able to make it all happen because he has a keen understanding of people. He knows how to play on misfortune, prejudices, and insecurities in ways that make others believe in absurdities and commit atrocities. Indeed, Iago plays on Othello's jealousy so completely that the general doesn't even take a moment to reflect that there would have been no time for Desdemona and Cassio to even have an affair. It's also worth pointing out that Othello is no hero himself in all of this. He straight up murders his wife for her fictional infidelity, and even when he realizes the truth, he justifies it by saying he did it because he loved too well, in quotes. Now, the authorities don't approve of him killing his wife, of course, but aw shucks, you know, they totally understand why a noble soul like Othello would have to do something like that if she cheated, you know? Not to judge Elizabethans by contemporary standards, of course, but you know, cool again, cool, 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 cool. Othello remains one of the most powerful, painful examples of Shakespearean tragedy even 400 years later. And sadly, the story of a con man manipulating people's prejudices in order to achieve his own selfish ends is still all too relevant today. But when we explore this by catching a performance or reading a copy of the script, we can witness for ourselves how Shakespeare captures the psychology of evil and the destructive power of hate so precisely. And heck, maybe if more of us climbed aboard the Othello Express to Tragedyville, we all might be a little less quick to jump on various hate bandwagons when they roll into a propaganda station. I know that analogy wasn't the best, but look, we can't all be Shakespeare, all right? Go read the play, it's really good. And look, I know that analogy wasn't the best, but we can't all be Shakespeare, all right? Though, truthfully, I don't think we actually need to be. I mean, you don't have to be a literary genius to build great stories, after all, especially when you have super powerful tools like World Anvil in your narrative crafting corner. As I'm sure you've realized by now, a bunch of us at Extra Credits have been crafting our own worlds for years now, be they RPGs, novels, or video games. And if you're like us, you know it is a ton of work to keep all of those disparate elements of all your world-building projects organized. But then again, if you are also like us, we know that you're gonna absolutely love World Anvil. It's an award-winning toolset used by millions of world builders, writers, and gamers that help you create, store, and organize your world setting. And truly, I cannot say enough good things about this toolset. It's like a freaking secret weapon for world design. You can use it to craft entire RPG campaigns or track timelines, family trees, diplomatic relationships, etc. Add awesome interactive elements to maps to help bring your story to life, organize your thoughts and worlds with their nifty and linkable freeform whiteboard feature, and then once everything is forged, you can easily share what you built with your readers, patrons, players, or whoever you want. In other words, it's exactly the tools that let me focus on the fun parts of world building, and that's the whole dang point after all. Plus, with over 25 just amazing looking visual themes, it's perfect for all genres from sci-fi to fantasy to space opera to historical fiction. And I gotta say, that has all come in handy in my genre-shattering Rift's Elden Ring, Gungeon, Stargate, Kingdom Hearts, Sonic the Hedgehog, Jim Carrey filmography, and Dino Riders 17th century rom-com mashup campaign that has just reached its endgame, where our heroes broke through their last dimensional barrier to finally face the puppet master of their entire multiversal fiasco, me. 
the DM himself. <laughs> and listen, if that all sounds convoluted, you are right on the money, which is why I was so thankful for World Anvil's chronicling tool, which helped me seamlessly link my timelines and maps to keep track of all of this chaos as it spilled out into role-playing or actual role-playing. I promise next year's campaign I create will be less convoluted. Maybe. So if you want to be able to create, store, organize all of the cool elements of your RPG, novel, video game, or whatever you're making, and just have an awesome time doing it, you can check out World Anvil right now absolutely free. And for a limited time, you can receive 40% off any annual membership by using the code extra credits. Then not only will the awesomeness you create come to life faster, but you'll also be helping out us at extra credits in the process, which we can never thank you for enough. Once again, that is code extra credits for 40% off any annual membership, and we cannot wait to see the weird, wild, and wacky worlds you build. So the legend is true. Skylar Holmes, Joseph Lame, Dominic Valenciana, Casey Mustia, Arcolite Games, Angela Valenciana, and Ahmed Ziad Turk are fantastic patrons, and we thank them so much.